In this comparison of the Olight S10 Baton XML2 and the Zebralight SC52, I'm hoping to avoid some of the common pitfalls of flashlight comparisons. I'm not going to dwell on talking points of basic specifications, nor am I going to hold your hand walking through a user interface. Rather, I'm going to take these two lights as a starting point to ask bigger questions about these classes of flashlights, the CR123A and the AA, both in single cell. From an EDC perspective and from a perspective of human perception, which of these two lights is better? The flashlight industry has a remarkably long relationship with the CR123 battery. You can go back as far as the brand Tecna and their monolith model, but it was really in 1988 when Surefire released the 6C model flashlight, which was the first compact lithium powered flashlight powered by a 123A battery. It produced about 60 lumens of brightness, but form factor was a major reason why the 6C was so successful and why it was so significant. It produced a much greater output than the typical D-cell flashlight popular at the time in a much smaller size. The 6C is also considered by some as the first tactical flashlight. At any rate, its innovative use of high power batteries and excellent carryability remained a benchmark for the EDC flashlight. Now, I'll admit, lithium cells are always going to have an important place in flashlights. First of all, in halo level, ultra high output flashlights, or surge lights that deliver lumens in the thousands and that will have sophisticated micro USB interfaces and built-in batteries. They're also going to be in nice mid-sized lights coupled with cells that uh, are kind of a good all-arounder like an 18650. But as far as everyday lights are concerned, lithiums are getting displaced. This is of course thanks to huge leaps in emitter technology. Emitters are giving you more bang for your buck than we've ever seen before. Of course, we're talking about brightness, uh, the amount of lumens that you're getting put out there. Now, both of the flashlights in this comparison are running Cree emitters. They both have XML emitters. Uh, the S10 has the L2 um, emitter, which is basically a newer version, has a little bit higher output. These are very large and very intense emitters that throw a ton of light. Um, maximum output is really their thing. They're a lumen monster. Um, they're not the most energy efficient, um, but uh, that's what's very interesting is that um, they are surprisingly good. I admit I'm creeping into specifications a little bit here, so let's go through some of the key features of these lights. The SC52 has basically three main levels. It's a high, of 280 lumens for 0.9 hours, um, a medium of 50 lumens for 7.5 hours, and a low of 1.7 lumens for four days. Now, there are a number of sub-levels that I'm not gonna get into, uh, mostly because I'm only ever gonna use the high level and the low level. Now, one thing that's remarkable about the uh, SC52 is that it accepts both 14500 batteries as well as traditional AA batteries. If you put in a 14500 battery, you're going to get a 500 lumen output for the first minute and that's going to step down to the 280 lumens. That is really powerful for a light this size. I'm interested in commenting in a little bit more detail about materials and construction of this light, but I'm going to hold off until we get the beam shots lined up. For now, we just need to keep in mind that high lumen output of 280 or 500 if you're using the 14500s. All right, tackling the specs of the Olight, we're looking at four main levels of output. The high output level is 400 lumens, and that's for an hour and a quarter. The medium output level is 85 lumens for seven and a half hours. And the low level is five lumens for 108 hours. Now the fourth level is a moonlight level, which is half a lumen for 360 hours. By way of comparison, the 400 lumen and 1.25 hour runtime is better on both counts on paper than the high on the SC52, which is 280 lumens for 0.9 hours. Okay, here's a hot spot shot about six feet away from the wall. On the left is the Olight and on the right is the Zebra Light. The Zebra Light's just running in AA 
and the OLED of course is running a CR123A. Really not a hundred lumens of difference as far as my eyes can tell. Okay, same scenario, but now the zebra light's running at 14500. OLED comes on first and is going to be at the right. Sorry, I switched it for this video zebra accidentally. Um, then the zebra light comes on and that is uh, 500 lumens. Um, I would say that looks like a brighter hotspot to me. Um, definitely whiter. Okay, here's the zebra light, 50 yards. And at 25 yards. And here is the O light at 50 yards. And at 25. Here is the zebra light with the 14500. Definitely brighter. 50 yards, 25 yards. Really the only one that's able to light up the tree very effectively either. Zebra light, 50 yards. O light, 50 yards. Now to me, these results are pretty mixed. And behind it is a fairly technical concept, um, the problem of perceived brightness. If you want to get really technical, there's a logarithmic relationship of sensational magnitude to stimulus intensity, and that's known as Stevens Power Law. This law teaches us that there are at least five related stimulus conditions that we should consider for brightness. A kind of quick reference often thrown around at Kenna Power Forums is that perceived light is in proportion to the square root of lumen output. So if you double the lumens, the light is only intensified by a factor of a square root of 2 or 1.41. Perhaps the central idea here is that our perception of brightness is logarithmic. If you were to create a scale based off of this logarithm, measuring levels of magnitude of brightness, um, surprisingly lights with significantly different lumens might appear very similar to the naked eye. There is the physiological component. Arguably there's a psychological component too. Gestalt law principles teach that our mind has a tendency to complete information as needed in order to make a complete picture and to minimize difference. This maybe brings me to the main thrust of this video that at one point CR123 batteries served a very important role in reducing size and increasing output in carryable small flashlights. But now, thanks to advancements in other aspects of flashlight technology, we're able to almost make a return to uh, a more lightweight battery form. It's uh, going to enable us to uh, become uh, less dependent on specialized parts. Um, of course, the Zebra Light's beauty is that you can throw in a high power battery there if you needed it, but in a way that's just for show. Now at this point you might be feeling like, well, all bets are off, but if you're still here, sure, I can give you some of my tabletop thoughts. Uh, the Zebra Light is beautifully machined. You have to understand that this case is from an aluminum bar stock, and so all of the aspects of it are, um, in my opinion, outstanding tolerances for a flashlight. Um, the head is very bulbous. You've got ridges for the, the main shaft of the body, um, fins up at the top. It's, a, it's an electronic switch. It's a soft touch switch. I think it feels outstanding. On the S10, I think the overall quality is lower. The switch is plastic and feels cheap and there is definitely play in it. I also don't really care at all for the clip. This is just a friction grip clip um, and it is reversible. The way it's set up now is head up which I definitely wouldn't want to carry it that way in my pocket. It does work nicely on a hat. 
Um, but uh, overall, uh, friction grip clips always loosen up. Um, you've got uh, a couple cool touches here in um, the head. You've got, uh, that's a red O-ring, and then you've got a little bit of scalloping there in uh, the chrome bezel piece. Uh, that was something that was clearly um, carefully thought out. Um, and all the black ionizing overall, the rest of the case isn't bad, but it really isn't a standout compared to the Zebra Light. In the hand and in the pocket, the less than half inch difference in height of the two flashlights is very negligible, especially when you consider that the Zebra Light has a better clip. It isn't perfect, um, but it's better. It's uh, fixed and it's a built in anti rolling measure. Both of these headstand and tail stand, they're really very stable for their size. Um, and the threading on both of them is very nice, although I have to say that I like the threading a little bit better on the Zebra Light. And I had to mention the extremely goofy English in the Olight's instruction manual. I think it's basically the consensus of the flashlight community that the SC52 is best in its class for real output and efficiency with a standard cell. Comparing this light to the Olight, it's really hard to see why you would want to choose this uh, dedicated flashlight battery when you can get nearly the same performance or at least very competitive performance from a much cheaper and much more accessible cell. I also have to say that as far as fit and finish and overall feeling of quality, the Zebra Light feels outstanding for a production flashlight. So I don't think I'm the first one to say, but in the small one cell format, the CR123A is no longer the king. I just want to give a quick hat tip to the guys at Everyday Commentary as well as Candle Power Forums. Amazing sources of information. Thanks so much for watching this and please consider subscribing and sharing this video.